You know, they say distance makes the heart grow fonder. And if that's the case, all 12 of my viewers probably have very fond hearts right now. It's been a long while since my last video. A lot of things have changed. Most of my hair is no longer in existence. In the arms of the angels. I'm becoming a man. I cut it off because I want people to respect me the way that they should respect Anthony Rizzo. And also because it's very hard to eat a burrito with the long hair getting in your face and mouth constantly. I'm sure absolutely nobody is wondering what I've been up to for these past seven months, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. Cause it's my show, goddammit! I've been very busy tweeting Eric Trump pictures of his own teeth. Not really a political thing, I just think he has the cutest little teeth. Uh, Fantasy-wise, a lot of good stuff happened last year. I won two of my leagues, mostly be because 100% of most of some of my picks worked out really well. Of course, there are going to be people who I said would be good who weren't good, but I always believe the best way of getting people to think that you know what you're doing is to never take responsibility for any mistakes. I blame the chemtrails. I blame the creme trail. Let's move on, because it's spring training. I love spring training. It's the best time of year because we get to start a new year, forget about all the pain from seasons past, and turn over a new leaf on a bright and more optimistic future. Following the format of earlier videos, today we're going to be talking about a couple guys who I think are not getting any love just based on their current ADPs. First up is Jose Perella, who currently has an average draft position of 424. Let's start off with some numbers that don't mean much of anything at all, and that's his overall stat line from between the majors and the minors last year. It's worth noting that 344 of those plate appearances came at the major league level, and while they don't tell us much, they do highlight how far Perella has come as a player player over the past year. As a prospect, Perla profiled more as a speedy, high average kind of guy who probably wasn't going to hit more than 10 home runs in a given season. Last year, however, we saw a notable change in his approach. For one thing, he cut down on his grand ball percentage, adding a bit more loft to his swing, and he paired this with much harder contact, which went a long way towards beefing up his power numbers. His contact and swinging strike percentages were almost exactly league average, and his X stats don't signify that there's a ton of regression coming up for him. The addition of Hosmer playing time is probably going to be an issue, but Perella has played second base, third base, and left field throughout his career. Considering his versatility and ability to contribute in just about every category, I think it's kind of a shame he's going after guys like Jesse Winker. Let's talk about Colin Moran. Either nobody taught this guy how to smile, or he's completely incapable of processing human joy. Either way, there's something very wrong with this man. And very right. How's that for a teaser? Moran has a lot going for him this year. Like Pirelli, he's a guy who's always had the ability to put the ball in play. But he lacked that one extra tool that would make him stand out and be a fantasy relevant player. That is until the last season when he completely revamped his swing and unlocked a ton of power. This is what Moran did over the course of 338 plate appearances last year. Not only were the 18 home runs a career high, but they were nearly as many as he hit in 2015 and 2016 combined in nearly three times as many at-bats. Now there isn't a ton of data to go on because Moran has not had a ton of at-bats at the big league level, but Jeff Sullivan over at Fangraphs actually had a really good article about some of the changes that Moran has implemented in his swing to unlock that extra bit of power. This is his old swing, which as you can see is very level. It's a solid job of just putting the ball in play and getting Moran on base. But this is the swing he unveiled last year. As you can see, helps him get under the ball a little bit better and generate a bit more power. I think at his current cost, he's definitely worth taking a flyer on, especially over some guys that are going ahead of him like CJ Cron, Joe Maurer, Matt Davidson, and even Brandon Belt. Now it's time for a blast from the past. Player from the glory days of baseball when men were still men and hitters injected themselves with Captain America juice and blasted taters all day. Okay, so he's not that old, but I kind of feel like Hanley Ramirez is being a bit disrespected so far in drafts. I know, I know, he's perpetually hurt. He had surgery on both his shoulders in the offseason, and his hair is an affront to bald men all over the country. Every time Hanley unveils a new hairstyle, you can just hear bald men all around the world 
yelling in unison, Why? Why have I been cursed like this when he abuses all that he's been given? If you don't look at xstats yet, I highly recommend going to xstats.org and checking out some players you're curious about. Essentially what it does is it tells you what kind of numbers these guys would be posting just purely based on their batted ball profile. So it's a great way of figuring out how lucky or unlucky a guy got in a given year. Now despite a really poor season by most standards, these are the X stats that Hanley posted yet last year. Not only that, but he raised his launch angle for the third year straight. Now generally for home runs you want your launch angle to be in the 15 to 20 degree range roughly, so the fact that he is almost at the lower end of that range is pretty encouraging. I'm just gonna be on the Hanley bandwagon until every last peroxide died dreadlock on his head falls out and he withers away into a fine dust. Which is not to say I'm expecting vintage Hanley this year, but I think he's in a good lineup, I think he's gonna get playing time, and I think he could return some really good value based on where he's currently going in drafts, which is essentially free. Alright guys, so that's my one quick video to bring in the new year. Before I go, I just want to say thank you guys all for watching. Before I go, just a quick shout out to Pitcher List. I recently have been granted the incredible opportunity to be a contributor over there. They're doing some really cool stuff, stuff that's not being done on any other website. And I'm not just saying that because I'm being paid to, although it definitely doesn't hurt if you know what I mean. I'm very grateful to be a part of the new site and I uh, highly recommend you guys check it out. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time.